He is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. We still say that because it's still Easter. The season of Easter is still this Sunday. This is the sixth Sunday of Easter, and it goes until next Sunday, the seventh Sunday of Easter, and in between, we'll have a, a celebration of the Lord's ascension into heaven. And we'll even have a special worship service that we'll make available on that day as well, too, on Thursday of this coming week. So I pray that you are able to make use of this worship service and that worship service. But today we're still focusing on how it is still Easter. And our theme for today is just that. It is still Easter, so live like it. You can follow along with our worship service on the picture-in-picture screen that is in this corner of your screen. If that is too small on on the device that you're watching, you can pause the video now and go to the link in the description for the video and download a worship folder that you can either print out or view on on another device like a phone or a tablet and you can participate with the worship service with the worship folder as well too. It is my prayer that you are doing well. Our, Our state is beginning to open up. Milwaukee County in which we live, in which our church exists, is still under stay at home orders and so in out of respect for our leaders we we are abiding by that out of, out of love for our neighbors and those whose immune systems may be compromised we are also seen for now it is best that we well delay opening up for a time especially since our county has directed us not to do so and so for the time being at least for for this week we are still having our digital worship services it's not the same and it, hopefully it does allow us to long all the more to gather together again in person. I personally can't wait for that day. But even though that day is not yet here, it doesn't mean we still have to live in doubt and, and in fear. We still get to live with the joy of knowing Jesus' tomb is empty, and because of that, our tombs will be empty. And that should affect, that does affect, how Christians live their lives. And today we're going to examine that in our worship service. With all that in mind, let's begin with our opening hymn. Dear Christians, one and all rejoice. We'll sing the first four stanzas.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart to confess our sins to God our Father, asking Him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Holy and merciful Father, I confess that I am by nature sinful and that I have disobeyed you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have done what is evil and failed to do what is good. For this I deserve your punishment, both now and in eternity. But I am truly sorry for my sins. And trusting in my Savior, Jesus Christ, I pray, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. Lord, have mercy. God, our Heavenly Father, has been merciful to us and He has given us His only Son to be the atoning sacrifice for all of our sins. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by His authority, I forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. We'll continue with the last, few, with the last stanzas of Dear Christians, One and All Rejoice.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh God, you are the giver of everything good. Inspire us, your humble servants, to long for what is right and through your gracious guidance to accomplish it to your glory. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. In our first lesson for this sixth Sunday of Easter, we turn to the book of Acts, chapter 17, where we have the Apostle Paul standing up and preaching to pagan unbelievers. Those who, who do not know the true God and yet to cover all their bases have set up an altar to an unknown God and this is the God that Paul is going to reveal to them. The only true God. The God who created everything. The God who gives us life and gave us his own son that we might have true life and now come to faith and live for him. And so... We read from Acts chapter 17. Paul then stood up in the meeting of the Areopagus and said, People of Athens, I see that in every way you are very religious. For as I walked around and looked carefully at your objects of worship, I even found an altar with this inscription, To an unknown God. So you are ignorant of the very thing you worship. And this is what I am going to proclaim to you. The God who made the world and everything in it is the Lord of heaven and earth and does not live in temples built by human hands. And he is not served by human hands as if he needed anything. Rather, he himself gives everyone life and breath and everything else. From one man he made all the nations that they should inhabit the whole earth. And he marked out their appointed times in history and the boundaries of their lands. God did this so that they would seek him and perhaps reach out for him and find him. Though he is not far from any one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being, as some of your own poets have said, we are his offspring. Therefore, since we are God's offspring, we should not think that the divine being is like gold or silver or stone, an image made by human design and skill. In the past, God overlooked such ignorance, but now he commands all people everywhere to repent. For he has set a day when he will judge the world with justice by the man he has appointed. He has given proof of this to everyone by raising him from the dead. This is the word of our God. We continue with our appointed psalm of the day, Psalm 66, where even now we shout for joy. Even now when we are realizing how fragile our physical lives are, we can shout for joy because we have a God who preserves both physical life and our eternal life and gives us the gift of life eternal through Jesus Christ. And so we sing his praises with Psalm 66. We'll sing together in unison.
Our second lesson comes to us from 1 Peter chapter 3, in which we are reminded that we need not fear living out our faith. Even if the world retaliates against us, we have been given a life that the world cannot take from us. That the world cannot take from us either because of the virus or because of unbelievers retaliating against us. The life we have received from God through baptism through the preaching of his word, means that we are his children. And now, we get to live in that joy. First Peter chapter 3. Who is going to harm you if you are eager to do good? But even if you should suffer for what is right, you are blessed. Do not fear their threats. Do not be frightened. But in your hearts, revere Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. But do this with gentleness and respect, keeping a clear conscience, so that those who speak maliciously against your good behavior in Christ may be ashamed of their slander. For it is better, if it is God's will, to suffer for doing good than for doing evil. For Christ also suffered once for sins, the righteous for the unrighteous, to bring you to God. He was put to death in the body and made alive in the spirit. After being made alive, he went and made proclamation to the imprisoned spirits. To those who were disobedient long ago, when God waited patiently in the days of Noah while the ark was being built, in it only a few people, eight in all, were saved through water. And this water symbolizes baptism that now saves you also. Not the removal of dirt from the body, but the pledge of a clear conscience towards God. It saves you by the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at God's right hand with angels, authorities, and powers in submission to him. This is the word of our God. Alleluia, alleluia, Christ is risen, he is risen indeed. Alleluia. If you love me, keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to help you. Alleluia. At this time, we join in confessing the Christian faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We'll continue with our hymn of the day, Jesus, your boundless love to me.
grace, mercy, and peace belong to you. From God, your Heavenly Father, and from your Lord and your Savior, Jesus Christ. Today, for our devotion, we're going to take a look at the gospel appointed for this sixth Sunday of Easter. From John chapter 14, beginning at the 15th verse. If you love me, keep my commands. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever. The Spirit of Truth. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him, for he lives with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Before long, the world will not see me anymore, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. On that day, you will realize that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. Whoever has my commands and keeps them is the one who loves me. The one who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I too will love them and show myself to them. This is the gospel of our Lord. There is an app on my smartphone called IFTT. Now it's an abbreviation, I-F-T-T-T. If this, then that. And I use that application on my smartphone to work with other things that I have, other smart things that I have, things that are connected to the internet. For instance, I have it set so that the sensors, the motion sensors in my house, if they're not activated, after a certain amount of time, it'll tell my thermostat to go into away mode. Or if I forget to have my garage door closed, well, if it gets to be 9 o'clock at night and my garage door is still open, this app will tell my house, tell my garage door opener to close itself. Now, I, I like te technology things. I like all those gadgets. I like all those things. And I like when they work together. I like when, they're do, when they do what they're supposed to. When the if this, then that programs and all that stuff just do what it's supposed to do. But every once in a while, it doesn't do what it's supposed to do. And that is frustrating, right? But usually it's not the fault of the application on my phone. Usually it's not the fault of the device itself. But it's my fault for when it doesn't do what it's supposed to do. There are any number of things, right? You, you thought you told someone to meet you at such and such a time, and they don't show up. It's not their fault, it's, it's your fault because you might not have told them. The if this, then that uh, of this life, well, there's usually something that falls apart and it doesn't always work the way it's supposed to work. Today, Jesus gives us an if-this-then-that scenario. He gives us the if-this-then-that of love for the Lord. And he never fails. He, he begins this section that we're studying from John's Gospel in chapter 14 by saying, if you love me. And that's a big if, isn't it? If you love me. And that can be intimidating to hear those words as, as a believer, as a Christian, to hear those words, if you love me, how, how, how can I know that I, that I love God? How can I know that I am in this group of people that Jesus is talking to? That he is saying we'll receive something if we love him. And then we re need to realize if it were up to us, if we were the ones that were to try to get that love into our hearts, to program us like I try to program my, my phone or other devices in my house, then sometimes we're, we're going to fail. We're, go, we're not going to do the right thing. We're not going to meet the requirements. But the thing is, that love that Jesus is asking of here, you don't come by it on your own. That if you love me, that Jesus is talking about, that love that he's talking about is a gift of faith, right? Right? We love because he first loved us. We love because we have a God who bothered to take time out of his ruling the universe, 
to have pity on us who ruined the creation that He lovingly gave us. And He said, I I love them. So I'm going to show them my love. I'm going to take on their human flesh and blood. I'm going to fulfill all of the perfection that I have demanded of them when I know that they're going to fail every single time they attempt it on their own. So I'm going to show them the love that I demand. I'm going to give them the love I, com- I-, I demand by preaching to them this love. By coming to this rebellious people and saying, I love you. This section of John chapter 14 happened on the night that Jesus was betrayed. That Monday Thursday, that Holy Thursday of Holy Week. It, this section that we're studying happened after Jesus had taken that towel, wrapped it around his waist, and, and showed love to his disciples by washing their dirty, stinking feet so that they would be prepared to eat the meal that, where he would give them his own body and blood. Jesus is showing them love. He's enabling them to love. Not because they have this in and of themselves, but because He gives them this love. He gives you this love. Though the if the, this then that of love doesn't start with you. It starts with Jesus, who gives you faith, who enables you through that faith to love Him and to love your neighbors, to show those deeds of love. So when He says, if you love me, keep my commands, or, or really, it would be better if we put a will in there. The better translation for this, set, for this first verse, for this for verse 14, verse 15, would be, if you love me, you will keep my commands. Because out of love for the Lord, Lord flows this obedience that will be there. And by saying this, we need that will there. Because otherwise, it can, it can come off as Jesus saying, if you love me, keep my commands. As if he's that, that, that child who, who just comes up to his, to his parents and says, if you love me, you would let me do this. If you love me, you would do this as if, as if they're giving a test for love. This isn't a test for our love for Jesus that he's giving us. He's just saying, this will naturally flow out of your faith, out of the faith I have given you. And he's not saying this so that we'll try to inspect our lives constantly. He doesn't want the believer to get so bogged down with thinking, well, did I, did I show love for Jesus today? He doesn't want you to try to keep tally marks on how many good things, how many acts of love you've done for Jesus. Like a prisoner keeps tally marks on how many days he's been in prison on the side of his cell. He doesn't want you to behave like that. He doesn't want you to be so obsessed with keeping score and keeping track as if you're caught in this prison and saying, when will it be enough, as the prisoner says, when will I have served enough days? No. Your love for the Lord just naturally gushes from your faith, just naturally proceeds from your life. And I've seen that recently. I haven't been able to see very many of you you in person, or at least not in the groups that I'd like to, but I've been in contact with many of you. And back two months ago, when when all of this safer at home stuff started, completely unprompted, I received emails from members here at Salem, phone calls from members here at Salem asking, how can I help? Asking, is there anyone at Salem that that has a need, that that needs help running errands, getting medication, getting groceries? Without me having to ask. Those phone calls came in. And so I've been lovingly referring to those people and that list has grown as the helping hands of Salem. And when we started asking, do you need a helping hand in our emails, I got more replies. Because you love the Lord. 
And love for the Lord shows itself in love for neighbors. And those are just things that I know about. I know that so many of you, members of Salem and others of you that are watching elsewhere, that you're showing kindness to your neighbors. You're showing kindness to your coworkers, to your families, to strangers, in, in many and various ways that I probably can't even think of. Because your faith sees the need of this world, sees how it has been affected with sin, and the coronavirus is just another evidence of that, of, of how we live in this broken world. And we need the love of Christ to flow out of believers. And we've been given more opportunities to show that love. And the thing is, it's not as if God says, okay, I have loved you, now you're on your own in how you show love. No, he, he promises that he will ask the Father to give you another advocate to help. He says another advocate. An advocate is one who pleads the case of someone else. And Jesus does that on our, on our behalf. He says, I love these people. I showed them the greatest love by laying down my life for them and calling them my friends and making them part of the family of believers. And then he says, I am going to ask my heavenly father, your heavenly father, which I have made him your heavenly father, I'm going to ask him to send you another advocate, another helper, another one to assist you in your living the life of faith. Because again, if it were on our own, if this, if this then that of love for the Lord relied in any part on us, even the continuation of that, we'd fall flat in our faces. But he says, I'm going to send you the spirit of truth, the Holy Spirit, See, it's not just as if God gives us that love and then says, okay, now you're on your own. But as we grow in our faith, as we continue to show our love for our neighbor and, and for all of those people who are around us, the Holy Spirit is the one that enables us, the one that encourages us, the one that builds us up. As we do what we're doing now, we focus on God's word. We, we are fed by his word and we're encouraged to do more. Not because we're trying to rack up that credit with God, but because this is just who we are now. The world may look at us and say, you're doing this because the Holy Spirit is guiding you? Yeah, okay. They'll try and ridicule us for believing that there is a God out there. There are so many people that are just saying, just be a good person to be a good person's sake. But no one's motives, this side of heaven, are perfect. The unbeliever does good works because they want their back scratched too. Ultimately, that's what it comes down to. Only the believer loves perfectly because our love has been given us from the Lord. And now we can love unselfishly without expecting anything in return. The world will look at us as if we have ulterior motives. But the only, believe, the only motive for the believer, ultimately, when, when our works are washed clean of all, of all stain of sin, is to lead people to the same Jesus who loved us and gave himself up for us. Who made it so that we are spotless and blameless by his suffering and death, by enduring the punishment for all of our sins. So now we can present our works, our deeds of love, to our Lord, and he smiles at them. And he says, well done, good and faithful servant. Jesus doesn't leave us on our own. He doesn't leave us like orphans. He promises to continue to come to us, even though we can't see him. But through faith, we do see him. Through faith, we are fed by him, we are nurtured by him, we are guided by him as he teaches us, as he taught his disciples. We have the words that they recorded from his very lips to guide us in this life so that we can help lead others to him. We are not orphans, but we are God's own children. 
being led in this life, being assisted in our works. The if this then that of love for the Lord means you are never on your own. Means that you always have the advocate, that helper, the Holy Spirit, leading you back to His Word, so that when you do give in to temptations, that when you do slide back into old patterns and, and thoughts of unbelief, you have the Lord coming to you through His Word, giving you correction. Reminding you of His great love. And it's in Him that we live and move and have our being. It's in Him that we have the ability to show this love. To live this love. To live as if the truth of Easter is actually true because it is. Because He is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. So our alleluia's are shown in our confession of faith and our deeds of love. In the book of James, we hear that faith without works is dead. That isn't meant to scare us. But that is meant to remind us of the if, this, then that of love for the Lord. If there is faith, if there is love for the Lord, then we can expect for that love to flow from the life of a Christian. It's not something that we're ever going to be able to measure on our own. And it's going to look different in every single person's life. But that love will be shown. And so we don't need to fear when our God tells us, whoever has my commands and keeps them is the one who loves me. The one who loves me will be loved by my Father and I too will love them and show myself to them. It, it can be easy to hear those words and think, am I showing enough love? That's not what Jesus gives these words for us to do. And, and we should be reminded of how Jesus said that on the last day when he separ separates believers and unbelievers and he looks to the believers and, say, and says, you were in prison, I was in prison and you visited me. I was thirsty and you gave me a glass of water. I was naked and you clothed me. And we'll say, when, Lord, when did I do those things for you? And he'll say, whatever you did for the least of these brothers of mine, you did for me. Well done, good and faithful servant. There are so many deeds of love that we don't even know that we're doing them. And they come from the faith in a God who gave everything for us. So the if this, then that of love for the Lord doesn't depend on you trying to program yourself like you would a phone or a computer, but it depends entirely on the love that your Lord has given you, the love that assures you that you are his own. Amen. Please stand. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, guide and guard your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. Let's join in singing the Create in Me. In our prayers of the church this morning, we want to give thanks to the Lord for the school teachers that have been serving faithfully here at Salem and all over our country and all over the world, really. And we want to give thanks to the Lord for the school teachers that will be leaving us this coming year and the school teachers that will be joining us this coming year here at Salem. Hopefully we'll have opportunities to rejoice in person in the not-too-distant future. 
We also want to keep in our prayers all those whose sources of income, whose occupations, whose, whose jobs may be in danger. Especially Sarah, the daughter of Linda Eichhorst. We also want to keep in our prayers Dave Nelson as he recovers from a successful triple bypass surgery this past week. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. For the faithful proclamation of Jesus Christ to those who do not know him, that through hearing the word of the Lord, many may be brought to faith and to the knowledge of truth. Let us pray to the Lord. For the church of God here and everywhere, that all who confess Jesus Christ may be united in doctrine and witness, defended against all the assaults of the enemy, and eager to gather together around the word and sacrament in love for one another. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, For this congregation of Salem, for the work of the kingdom in our community, and for the resources to accomplish all that God desires. For our current teachers, our workers in our harvest field here, for the new workers that, Lord, you will give to us, and for those workers that are leaving after having faithfully served here, we pray that our God's name may be glorified among us and his purpose fulfilled in our words and works. Let us pray to the Lord. For the agencies and institutions through which we love our neighbor and provide for those in need, for the destitute and homeless, and for everyone who suffers unemployment or underemployment. And please be with Linda Eichhorst's daughter, Sarah, whose job may be at risk. And please be with all those who are struggling to find employment, that we may aid them in their needs and assist them to find honorable labor to supply all of their needs. Let us pray to the Lord. For the lonely who suffer the burdens of life without friendship or family, for those depressed or weary of pandemic measures, and for the fellowship of the church that we may bear one another's burdens and live in community with Christ as our head. Let us pray to the Lord. For the sick and those who suffer, especially Dave Nelson, as he recovers from a successful triple bypass surgery, that God would grant healing to their bodies, peace for their minds, and consolation in their grief and sorrows. Let us pray to the Lord. For the love of godly things, that we may delight in God's word and walk in his ways, and for the spirit, that we may be led into all truth and kept from error and false doctrine. Let us pray to the Lord. For the nation, for those who lead our nation, for the end of the pandemic, for peace among nations, and for an end to terror and violence, that we may work for the common good so that justice may prevail, life be protected, and truth abound. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, O Lord our God, as we recall the obedient life and life-giving death of your Son for our salvation, We pray to you to strengthen our faith and make our hearts bold that we may not fear but address our prayers to you in all humility. Hear us on behalf of Jesus Christ, our great high priest, who even now stands before you on our behalf, pleading our cause with his own blood until that day when we are delivered from the changes and chances of this mortal life and stand before you in heaven. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. We'll continue with the hymn. Take the world, but give me Jesus.
Please stand for prayer. Blessed Lord, you have given us your holy scriptures for our learning. May we so hear them, read, learn, and take them to heart. That being strengthened and comforted by your holy word, we may cling to the blessed hope of everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord, who also taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with his favor and give you his peace. We'll close with the hymn, God's Own Child, I Gladly Say It.
is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Thank you for joining us here at Salem for our Sunday morning worship. I pray that God speeds the day when we can gather together in person, but thank you for joining us online. We have several things here at Salem that we want to keep you aware of, and we want you to join us in giving thanks for. Today I'm recording this. It's around noon here on Saturday, and just moments ago, the assignments for the graduates of Martin Luther College were read, and they were given their assignments for their first teaching ministries. And Salem was assigned one of those graduates. We were assigned Grace Ungamak to serve in our seventh grade classroom, and we give thanks to the Lord of the Church for giving another worker for the harvest field here at Salem. There will be a number of new faces here at Salem, and so we, we give thanks to God for these new called workers. Grace Ungamak, Jennifer Sims, Jules Cross, and Brandy Bivens. We pray that God speed the day that they can come and join us and that he keep them safe until we get to meet them and keep them in his tender care as they, as they serve us and him here at Salem. We look forward to partnering with you. We also thank the current teachers and all the efforts that they are doing as this year comes to a close. Hopefully in the, in the near future we'll be able to gather and give thanks together with them and to thank the Lord for those teachers that will be leaving Salem for other fields of service. I also have an ask of the congregation. In fact, our teachers have an ask of the congregation. We will be putting together care packages for our Salem 8th graders who are graduating. We will also be putting together care packages for the members of our Salem family who are, gather, who are concluding their high school careers during this time of coronavirus quarantine. So if you are able, we ask that you would please donate prepackaged treats that can be put into care packages or gift cards in quantities of $5 or $10 to favorite restaurants or Target or Walmart or even gas stations. And those can be included in the care packages and given to these, to these graduates from Salem, Salem's 8th grade class or our Salem members who are completing high school so that we can celebrate with them even if we can't celebrate in person. If you're not able to give those gifts, you can also uh, bring in money uh, to, uh, to assist volunteers who will purchase items for these care packages. We ask that all gifts and all contributions towards these care packages be received here at Salem by this coming Friday, May 22nd. I know that's a short amount of time, but we hope that you're able to help us out with this, with, with this celebration as we give thanks to God for the accomplishments of our Salem 8th graders and our Salem family members who are completing high school. I also want to inform you that we will be meeting as a council. Our church council will be meeting Monday, May 18th. So hopefully you're watching this on Sunday morning. We'll be meeting tomorrow, Monday, May 18th. And we'll be discussing many things. We'll be discussing a bunch of things that have been going on. We'll be discussing the possibility of opening up. Now, the Supreme Court of Wisconsin did overturn the statewide stay-at-home orders, but counties are able to enforce their own stay-at-home orders within their jurisdictions. And we are currently under Milwaukee County's stay-at-home orders. And so we want to be as faithful as we can as we respect our God-given leaders and honor the fourth commandment. But we also want to be sure that we can, in the best way as we can, honor the third commandment and give God glory and praise and worship him appropriately, all while still taking care of our neighbors and their well-being, according to the fifth commandment. And so please pray for your leaders here at Salem as we meet virtually Monday, May 18th. If you have any questions or concerns, you can relate those to me. My contact information is at salemwells.net, our church website. That is all that I wanted to highlight for, the, for this week. I pray that you are doing safe and God keep you in his tender care until we're able to meet again. And remember, God is good all the time. And at Salem, we will rise as one. Thank mm -hmm. you.